In this video we check out the basic assembly for the new Rohan House plastic kit. Welcome to Zorbazorb Gaming, my name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and welcome to the first installment in our new War in Rohan Terrain series. Some absolutely fantastic new terrain kits have come out alongside the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Supplement, and in this series we're going to be diving in deep and pushing those kits to their fullest potential. We're going to start off with some basic but comprehensive assembly guides, and then progress to some really advanced design work showing all of the variety that you can create with these kits, and then finish off with some pretty special project builds as we create some really special terrain pieces all themed around the war in Rohan. But first up, it is the staple of all Rohan landscapes, a Rohan house. As we crack open the box, you'll see that the components are spread across two identical sprues, which gives us all of the pieces we need to make one Rohan house with quite a variety of different options. We've got wall pieces, beams, pillars, roof sections, and a whole lot of wonderfully detailed plastic. On the sprue, there are a whole lot of corresponding codes and numbers that relate to part numbers uh, that are explored in quite detail in the instruction manual, which is a great visual guide, which you won't need because you've got this video. Now the build we'll be covering in today's video can be broken down into three sections. We've got the walls and the wood panelling, the main roof structure, and our porch options. We're going to start things off by constructing all of the wall components that we need to make a basic rectangular Rohan house. I'm going to grab myself a scalpel, some clippers, and a file to prepare all this plastic as I take it off the sprue, and then I'm going to clip off all of the wooden panelling and all of our joinery beams. Now, one of the things that you'll see about this kit is it's incredibly modular. All of these different wood panels can be joined together in different ways. We have two main joinery beams, one that is set as a corner piece that enables us to create right angles, and one that is essentially a T-join that allows two wall panels to be joined together to make a longer section. Now you'll notice we have two of each of our wall panel sections because of course the two sprues are identical, but one detail that's really fantastic is every side of these wood panels is different, which means we've got a lot more variety jammed into the sprue options, but it also means that the walls inside the house are going to be completely detailed as well, which gives us a great starting point for building interiors. And I'm going to be building this entire house and all of my houses so that the roofs are always removable and that you don't have them glued and fixed onto the structure permanently. So now that we've got all our components ready off the sprue, it's time to have a look at how all these pieces fit together. Now you'll notice that we've got wall panels and then we've got these beam joiners. Now there are two types of joiners. We essentially have a 180 degree beam that allows two pieces to lock together to make a longer wall section in the same plane. And then we have this 90 degree beam joiner that effectively becomes the corners of our building and allows us to create hard 90 degree corners. Now you can see this is going to be absolutely fantastic to expand and create. We can change the size of walls or the shapes of corners very easily and get some really great results. For this structure, we're going to be building a nice simple rectangle by joining one of our smaller walls to one of the longer wall panels to create two longer walls and then joining those on either end with the remaining two wall pieces to create a simple rectangular shape. Now the windows that you choose to be on outside are, you know, very important here. Uh, you can kind of mix and match from buildings to create even more variety. For me, I'm going to be having a door on each side of the longer walls and then I'm going to be using the kind of fancier windows to face outwards with some nice crossbar uh, just to build a little bit of a fancier Rohan hovel. To create our rectangular wall structure, we want to take one of the longer wall pieces and join it to one of the shorter pieces using our 180 degree beam joiners. Now we're going to be gluing all of this model together with plastic glue, I'm using the Citadel brand, and it's important that we use plastic glue and not cyanoacrylate or super glue because we want to fuse these plastic components together to get a really nice bond, otherwise plastic on plastic with super glue can be quite brittle and you'll find that the terrain pieces are not as durable when assembled. So create a seam of glue down each side of that 180 degree joiner and then you can simply put that in the center and press the two wall pieces together and you've got yourself a longer section of wall. It really is that easy. We're going to do the exact same thing using our 90 degree or our corner beam pieces and join the last two pieces of wall sections on either end of our two longer sections we've just created and look at that, we've got ourselves a lovely rectangular structure. 
So now that we've got our main rectangular wall sections down, it's time to create the triangular gable which sits on the two short ends and creates a support for our roofing. So you can see here there are two triangular pieces uh, which are going to join together to make a larger triangle and you'll notice once you've prepared and cleaned those with your scalpel and your file that they have again an alternating pattern on either side with the timber beam direction. Essentially you can create vertical or horizontal beams facing outwards depending on the way that you glue these two joins together. Now these are using the exact same principles as our flat rectangular wall sections. I'm going to grab one of my remaining 180 degree joiners, put a little bit of glue on either side and then press that in the center and join the two triangular components together. And then we have ourselves a fantastic looking larger triangle with some lovely timber paneling. Now there is one more component, there is a longer beam uh, which sits on the very bottom and you just want to put a little bit of glue on the little tab that pokes up and click that into the bottom of the triangular gable and that will overhang the bottom of the gable and become a support that helps you join that triangular section to the main rectangular wall structure. This particular piece is a really great design feature because it creates an extra level of bonding and you kind of get like that two point of contact when you're gluing the triangular gable down onto the rectangular walls. Rather than just gluing this piece straight on top and it just being a flat transverse surface, this way you get a really nice bond that's really strong. So do that on both sides and then our main wall sections are completely finished and it's time to begin our roof structure. So now we're going to cut out all of the major pieces for our roofing. We obviously need our large thatched roof panel, our cross beams, and then of course our decorative cross beam features. We have two options on this sprue and there are enough options to use them exclusively, one or the other. We've got the really big kind of ostentatious Rohani horse heads and then more of a simple kind of Viking longhouse uh, timber finishing beam that has a nice Rohani feel as well that isn't quite as big and detailed. The first thing we want to do with this roof is join our cross beam sections to each side of the panelling. Now all of these joins are done with a tongue and groove and they do only go one way so you've got one piece for either side so using a little bit more plastic glue we'll run a thin seam down the edge of the thatch panel and then attach the particular cross beam. Now it is important that when you join these pieces that you roll the glue to the underside so that your excess glue doesn't squirt out all over the thatch because you don't want that glue sitting there in big clumps because it will either melt the plastic or form a really kind of obvious detail obscuring lump. While the two large panels with their cross beams dry, I'm just going to grab my top thatch ridging which runs along the very top of the roof and join that together. It's got another tongue and groove that locks in very simply to create a nice long piece of thatch ridging that is the same length as the panels. We can then glue this straight to the panels uh, uh, by just applying a nice seam of glue all the way along. Once again, as you glue this down, you want to line up the decorative pieces of thatch and then roll it down so the excess glue goes underneath on the underside and you don't obscure any of the nice detail. Do this on both sides and this will be a little flimsy as you join it because you need the final pieces which is our decorative cross beam pieces to lock it all together. So just kind of stand it up on your desk uh, while you pick your pieces and then join up all of the little tabs with some more plastic glue and it will all lock into place. These timber grooves uh, really kind of lock in and they really secure everything and they keep everything at the perfect angle uh, so you can just let that dry and it will pretty much perfectly align onto the gabling that you've set up on the house structure. So there you can see that roof piece is really strong, really solid and it slots on and off that house structure really easily without having to be glued down as a piece which is going to be fantastic for gameplay because now we can get in there really easily. Now the next thing that we're going to do is build our porch and there are actually enough options to build three different types of porches from each kit. Now what I've done here is I've laid out the three different styles of porch, I've pulled in a couple of extra components for some other kits so you do only get enough thatched roofing to actually make one porch but I just wanted to show you guys what uh, each of the component layouts look like for the three alternate designs depending on which you build. So first up we're going to build the classic porch that we see on the cover art which is the really kind of big heavy one with the big tall door and the lovely timber panels. So the first thing we're going to do is glue our door together. It comes in two halves of course one half on each sprue and it's got a nice lovely tab that allows it to lock in really easily. So put a bit of glue on that tab but also run a thin bit down the seam so you get a really nice join. 
Now we're going to join our two side panels from the porch to that door, so just grab our plastic glue and run a nice seam of glue down the little tab on one side of that porch, and then we're just going to grab a 90 degree joining beam. Exactly the same components as our normal wall panelling, you can see it's all really universal in this kit, and we're going to glue that onto the extruded tab from the wall panel, and then put a little bit more glue on that 90 degree, uh, and then you'll see there's a little tab on that side of the door, and it all clicks together nice and simply. Repeat the exact process in a mirror image on the other side and then you will have your two wall panels and your door for your little porch and then we just need to create the porch's roof. Now this is another little trick here that we're going to do because we don't want to glue this roof to the porch because eventually we'd like that roof section to be joined to the bigger section and all lift off together. So these roof structures are exactly the same as the big roof structure. You've got the thatch tiles, you've got the little cross beams that you need to glue separately and then you've got that same slotting mechanism mechanism where you can slot in your crossbeam detail piece, whether that's the horse's head or the gentle curve shape, uh, it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same locking mechanism and they're exactly the same pieces as well. So it's really, really universal. So join up your crossbeams, run a seam of glue along the ridge of the thatch piece and lock it all together and then bring in your crossbeam detailing piece to lock those pieces down and grab the perfect angle. Now one thing I like to do with these is because they're a little bit smaller and you're only putting one horse head on one side is kind of glue them all up but make sure you haven't got any excess glue on the underside and then sit them in on the top of the porch structure so that you know it's all locked in at the right angles and let it dry that way just make sure you don't accidentally glue them together. One key here is making sure that you don't get any excess glue spilling out on any of the joints. So I just like to grab uh, either my scalpel or the tip of my file uh, anytime I'm joining thatch on thatch and just run it down. It really breaks up any of that excess glue, particularly when you've got timber beam uh, kind of surfaces matching because you don't want that spilling up and creating a ripple that obviously wouldn't be there. So our second porch is very similar to the first, except instead of having the door piece at the front, we have some decorative horse heads and a bit of a triangle gable. So grab those same wall panels and their 90 degree joiner and glue those up, and then we're gonna grab these horse head decorative posts and glue one of those in instead. And you'll see that it creates quite a nice little uh, horse head decorative buttress that juts out towards the top of the door, and do that on the exact same side as well, and then we'll be ready to set up our triangular gable to create the door. Doorway. Now this gable also has two sides. It's got a little slot uh, as well as kind of like a sun that could be quite decorative. Uh, so you can, you know, get some even more variety from these kits. Uh, it's, it's all up to you. Before you glue the triangular gable down, uh, I'm going to assemble the roof exactly as I did for the first porch by joining together the cross beams, the thatch and the cross beam detail piece. And by doing this in this order, it's going to enable us to get that gable at the perfect angle and the perfect uh, uh, alignment with the walls. Because of course these two side walls aren't joined together like they are with the first porch where we had the big door piece that glued them together to make three components, uh, we need to make sure that we glue these to the gable uh, at the right angle which essentially becomes that third piece it takes the space of the door so we want to drop a little bit of glue across the top of the horse's head and across the top of the 90 degree beam post uh, we're going to align the gable up inside the glued roof and then we're going to take our two wall pieces and glue those down onto the triangular gable and just make sure that you lock everything in together there's little grooves inside the thatched roofing pieces that allow you to line everything up perfectly and then once it's all dry you can just pull the roof away and it will be joined together correctly now the final variation of the porch does away with the kind of small timber panels altogether and just takes another one of those horse head decorative pieces and puts it on the other side of the 90 degree post joiner. That way we get this kind of double horse effect where effectively instead of having walls we just have some posts coming down from our porch roof and the main doorway, the main entrance becomes just the, the door piece that's on the actual panel, the square panel of the main rectangular wall structure. So we're going to build up those posts again by grabbing a 90 degree joiner and gluing in two of those horse head detail pieces. And then the other difference with this porch is because we don't have those timber panels which create the side, we need to create a crossbar which the roof mounts on. So we get a small little crossbar piece and join that to the triangular gable. And then once we've got that kind of three-faced section, uh, we can glue down our posts with the two horse heads onto the corners and create a very slimmed down porch which looks fantastic once it's got a little roof added to it as well. So 
So now we've got our three porch options created. These are currently ready to go and mount onto any 90 degree surface. So we could just uh, stick these straight on the front of the building or on the side of any double story building. Uh, anything that's kind of flat, they will mesh perfectly. But of course, we want to stick them to the side of the building. Now you'll notice here that there's a couple of kind of pre-logged grooves in the thatch on the main building that allows you to slot the porch in at two spots, which is really brilliant design and allows it to work well really together. But of course, there's a bit of a gap between the porch and the main wall structure. So what we get on each sprue is these two uh, thin beam components that we need to glue together and they make a thicker beam which then mounts to the house and kind of fills in that space. It's essentially a spacer that allows the main porch to join to the main house on this side with the thatch overhang. It's got a little tongue and groove so it slides up under the thatch and will allow the roof to sit perfectly flush with the timber beams. So just glue those two pieces together and then slide them over the porch panelling and you get a really simple extension which you can see locks up and underneath and now you have a porch that is flush with the main house. So it's all looking fantastic, but of course we've got a hole in the thatch now. We need to continue that thatch and extend that roof line so it meshes with the large section of the thatch housing. So we get two little small triangular thatch pieces on our sprue, which we're going to clip off and join together, and then we're going to attach those to extend the roof line of the porch. Now it's really important that you clean these up quite nicely, make sure that you get all that detail really smooth, because you're going to be joining these pieces to the thatch of the main roof, and you don't want any bumps that are going to stop that join uh, because it's so kind of riven with detail of all the different thatch layers uh, it's going to be really obvious if it's not sitting properly so first up glue those two triangular pieces together they've got a lovely little tongue and groove and then join those two thatch pieces to the other thatch roof sections on the porch and then you'll see we've got a lovely kind of extended set of triangular prisms uh, that is going to kind of sit beautifully at the perfect angle to mesh with the main roof now before we glue that roof down to the bigger roof, we're going to actually glue the porch structure in place to the main walls of the house. And that way everything's going to be locked perfectly in proportion before we start messing with the roof line. So we'll put the roofs to one side for a second and we're going to take our porch and line it up on the perfect spot on that side panel. Now it's important that to get it in the exact right spot, you actually line it up while you've got the main roof on because of course you need to use those two grooves in the main thatch layer uh, to kind of locate where your beams uh, should be glued onto the main wall because on the actual wall panels there's no location points it's all about uh, you know relative to that thatch roofing because essentially you could just glue these anywhere if you had a, a, a flat wall with no thatch uh, this section would just glue on perfectly so find those two notches in the thatch and then locate it and press it up firm against that section make sure you keep everything really square you locate it all and make sure it's perfectly aligned with the thatch and then just get your fingers and thumbs and apply a fair bit of pressure and really let that glue because those glues are essentially just flat surface to flat surface there's no extra bonding so you really want to make sure it locks in properly uh, as it's drying just you know chuck your roof thatching back on and check that it all lines up and then you're good to go so the final piece of the puzzle for the porch is to of course join our roof lines so we have one roof piece which pulls off uh, and sits over the top of the entire building structure. So we're going to run quite a reasonable amount of plastic glue across the edge of those triangular thatch pieces, lock down the first roofing section and make sure it's sitting absolutely perfectly flush on the main structure and then what you do is you grab your small glued up porch roof and you lock it in at the very top corner and then kind of fold it down towards the main structure so you make sure it it locks in properly before any of the plastic mates makes contact uh, and then you'll get it sitting in exactly the right place uh, and you won't have any glue kind of landing on detail that uh, isn't eventually going to be covered by plastic. So you could just leave this building there, it looks quite great, it's got a lovely little roof line but there are a couple of extra thatch roof pieces and one more piece of triangular gable with another uh, cross beam feature piece that allows you to make just a small little roofing section that you can mount on the opposite side or on the same side even if you wanted to to create a little bit more detail. I'm going to mount my section directly 
directly opposite uh, the porch, just like they did in the box art to really recreate that building, but you could move it anywhere you like. Now, if you are trying to get it directly opposite, there's actually quite an obvious piece of thatch that's kind of missing a little bit of a layer that allows you to line up that top section perfectly, which uh, obviously Ray, the designer, did intentionally if you wanted to make sure it was a perfect mirror image, uh, which really helps you locate it, and then you just slot it down and it locks into place on the top of the thatch, uh, and as long as you've got it at the right height and taking it from that point, it'll look absolutely perfect. And with that final roof piece glued in, the simple Rohan house built from one kit is finished. We've got some great flexibility and design options, there's different features that are available, and we've been able to build it so that the roof is fully removable as one piece and doesn't have any awkward kind of misjoins or any problem sliding on and off the main structure. So there we have it guys, a really basic assembly guide for everything we can do, the flexible options we have with a single kit of this Rohan house. Now I think you'll agree, it's a bloody awesome kit, really flexible, chock-a-block full of detail as all the new Plastic Games Workshop kits are, but so versatile and so well designed. But my goodness, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The amount of stuff you can do with this kit is mind-boggling. Obviously this is just with one kit, we can bring in more and more kits, things can get bigger and crazier, I'm sure you guys can kind of infer from the way that the components are designed it's all about modularity we can combine walls we can build multiple stories the roof lines the floor plans there's a lot we can do to make stuff really interesting there's a lot of photos flying around in the community as well of uh, kind of things people have been doing crazy builds not just with the Rohan houses but also combining the watchtower and palisade kits so basically in this kind of Rohan terrain series that we're gonna do here I'm gonna dive into all of the broad spectrum of possibility with these amazing new kits We'll have another in-depth look at the basic guide for the Rohan uh, Watchtower and Palisades. Then we're going to do a kind of more detailed, complex design overview of the possibilities of these Rohan house kits. We've got, you know, multiple floor plans, multiple uh, kind of roof lines, all the kind of really awesome stuff we can do to get some really great looking tables that isn't just, you know, lots of these little buildings repeating over and over again. Then, once we've had a look at that and kind of brought in some Watchtower elements as well and, and really kind of mixed things up, we're also going to do some really specific project builds. There's a couple of like gorgeous buildings that I really want to make, like the Rohan Royal Stables or, you know, Metacells, because we all know that's happening. So uh, we'll also kind of do big project specific videos on those buildings as well. So if you guys kind of see my boards and go, ah, oh, that was all built with the modular kit, that building's amazing, uh, there'll be an exact guide for those real show pieces as well, so you guys can follow them and, and make them exact exactly, or use them as a leap off point uh, for kind of similar sort of stuff as your own. Basically, we're just going to push this terrain to the limit and make as much cool stuff as possible. So I'll try and get all these guides out as fast as I can. I know with, you know, the break coming up and Christmas, you guys are going to probably, you know, be putting in your feet up over the holidays and getting buried in glue and plastic and, and kind of working on these kits. So I'll try and get, at the very least, the nice advanced complex design guide out really quickly as well uh, because they are amazing kits and I, I cannot wait to see what you guys do with them. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you head over to our Zorbazorp Facebook community group and post up any photos photos of the kind of the kits that you build or the design ideas that you have because you know there's just so many people posting great stuff Joshy put some awesome stuff up yesterday uh, and everyone is kind of like one-upping each other and nicking stuff from each other's designs and it's really awesome to see as we all kind of get caught up in the wave of inspiration if there's any specific design ideas you'd like me to try in the complex design video drop it down in the comments below and just in general what do you guys think of these kits are you excited by them do you like the level of detail are you keen to get some yourself have you got some yourself did you get sucked in by the strong hold which was amazing value uh, I'm sure you all did it was just oh, such a good box uh, and yeah definitely keen to see what you guys are doing and let me know what you think make sure you subscribe if you're new around here and check out all the other war in Rohan content we've got we have a whole lot more coming out as well the gorgeous narrative campaign is in the works once we smash through some of this terrain this build series and more legendary legion action as well it's gonna be fantastic if you want to support the channel head on over to our patreon we've just launched a whole bunch of amazing new rewards that people are getting really excited about and we're also about to launch our live stream next week I'm literally heading to Australia Post right now to see if my capture card has finally arrived it's been delayed for like weeks uh, because of all of these Christmas postage delays so hopefully the capture card is there and then the studio will be finally finished and we'll be ready to rock and roll uh, I'll post a little announcement video tomorrow or something to keep you guys posted if the live stream is going ahead on Monday morning exciting times that's Aussie time uh, all the details will be in the coming video but yeah super happy with these kids hope you guys are 
2. What a wonderful time to be playing Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. We will see you next time right here on Zorbazork Gaming. Cheers, guys.